Okay, audio. I see audio bouncing up and down. I'm assuming you can hear us and you can see us. Hi. You got our names wrong again. (laughs) That one's Chris. And and I'm Cherie. Wait, no. I'm Cherie. I'm Chris. This is Cherie. You might know us online as Technomadia. And we're coming to you live from Benson, Arizona. And we are at our new to us RV lot (laughs) at the Escapee Saguaro Co-op Park. Um, So we are going to be sharing with you a tour of this place. We're going to be sharing with you more about the Escapee Co-op Park (laughs) system and what are the benefits of living in one. And And why why nomads like us would have bought into a place like this that doesn't have wheels. It's our first home that doesn't move in quite a while. So, first of all, should we give them a tour? Uh, First off, hopefully somebody's... I'm assuming the sound and audio is... People can hear us, so good. I'll... I think it's good. Do you want the tour? Do you want to do an ex- set a little context first? And okay, a little context first. Yeah. So we first came to the Escapee Saguaro Park in Benson, Arizona. About uh, first time visit was 2015, and we came here to visit our friends Jill and Tom, who yeah. were uh, longtime leaseholders here. Yeah, and we were doing it. Was that the Thanksgiving visit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So we were, we were here for Thanksgiving, and we hooked up with them and um, decided to do like a big fajita feast for Thanksgiving and had a really good time. And we were impressed by, we'd always heard about the co-op parks, but we had never been to one before. And we, we were just really impressed by just the vibe here and just the beauty of it. And particularly we're sitting on Jill and Tom's porch and looking out at this mountain view and we're like, okay, this is gorgeous. We this love is gorgeous. It. And at that point we had been on the road nine years and we're not even thinking about <laughs> ever settling down anytime soon, but we were starting our boat hunt. We were already... Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about the boat. Yeah, we were back talking then. about boats, and and our friends uh, Nina and Paul are wheeling it. They were like telling us about this place as well, and they're like they had already just you know put themselves on the hot list, which we'll explain in a minute. So they were already on it. We're like, okay, it makes sense. Maybe we should put our name down on this list too. So in a few years, we might have a place. So we decided we came back through here after our winter in uh, roaming around the desert southwest. And uh, we made one last visit here in, I think it was March 2016. And before we left, we went ahead and put our names on the hot list because there is quite a waiting list to get (laughs) into a spot like this. And uh, we decided, you know, just to keep the option open. You can get that $500 deposit back at any time. Um, so we just put our name on the hot list. And then as our boating plans emerged, um, it became it really started to seem right to leave the bus, had this be our winter home base for our bus. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and as we move up the Great Loop, where it gets cold uh, in the winters, so and we'll be storing the boat in the winters because we're doing the loop very slowly on the right. boat. And yeah, so we, like, we love the idea. We love the desert southwest, particularly in the winter. You know, summer in the desert southwest has got a few downsides to it. But we love the desert southwest. So we're thinking... If we combine our RVing in the desert southwest in winter, boating in the, the summer, and we get the best of both worlds. And we just we kind of back our mind that this is also a good place to leave our bus. You know, things mm-hmm. don't decay too rapidly. This is where, mm-hmm. where vehicles are mothballed. This is where our bus lived it's most of its 50, 60 years. Um, so we're like, this is a good, this is a good base right. camp for us. And this is on the eastern part of um, <laughs> of Arizona. It's right off I ten, so it's easily accessible. There's an Amtrak stop here, so we can reach it by train. Uh, we're only forty five minutes <laughs> from Tucson, so it's really easy to get to a big city and an airport yeah. and an airport. And it's uh, just a really great location in a beautiful area, close to Bisbee and Tombstone. Karchner Cavern, so a lot to explore right around here as little day trips. And apparently there's like seven Harvest Host wineries within just a, like an hour's drive as well. So there's there's stuff. And there's stuff. So, but, so what is a co-op? I guess. Well, let's, let's give a tour, let's and give, then, okay. then we'll talk about a co-op. So okay. um, I'm going to go remote. I'm going to take our roaming camera. Chris is going to sit here and yeah. narrate, and hopefully this doesn't <laughs> drop out. Right. So yeah, the, the roaming camera and the audio wouldn't go together, so we're dealing with a little technical glitch here. So Cherie, you could take well, first of all, yeah. tour of the interior of the uh, casita. We've been going crazy, um, setting up this up like a dorm room. Okay. Yeah, so we have all, all sorts of great um, um, Walmart and Amazon furniture just to put this together quickly because this was a bare room when we got here. There's that view we fell in love with. Uh, the hillsides here are terraced, so every RV area, every street is above the street below it, so you don't have your view be just other RVs. You actually can see the mountains. The terracing is fabulous. Okay, yeah. inside. Okay, sure. Uh, we have a little room here. Yeah, so the, our, room, our casita is a two-room casita. That This other room is set up to be a bathroom. It's actually pre-plumbed and also a storage room. And right now it's a kind of our chaos room as we've been projecting. Um, and 
and uh, yeah, but eventually we'll probably put in a bathroom here and, and a bar and um, some storage. Now Cherie's going outside. There's our bus right out the front door of the casita. And there's our van also parked up there. So we've got the, the fleet here. Let me turn off our names. We don't need that up there. And you can just see the clubhouse. Actually, we didn't think we were going to like having a spot right across the street from the clubhouse. But actually, we do. Um, hello. Yeah. So we're liking that. And then our neighbor has got some of the best landscaping in the entire place. Um, and so we benefit from her incredible landscaping work. Our, our lot is not super landscaped. Um, but hopefully, she, hopefully we're not dropping too much video here. Um, and you know, we're pushing the limits of our Wi-Fi uh, range at the moment. But you can see coming through, there's the side door, there's the bus, and the back patio. She goes to the patio. Yeah, so this is right out where the window is where we were. Um, is just sitting on this patio is just divine. You get kind of the, theoretically you get a sunrise and then you get what they call the second sunset here. So as the sun sets behind us, all those mountains just light up and turn pink and orange and beautiful colors. And oh, hey, look at this. Here we are coming back around. <laughs> and I think that didn't drop too much. So good job. There's just a few little stutters out there. Probably better that I stayed inside and narrated. <laughs> cool. <laughs> we are dealing with some challenging both cellular and Wi-Fi signal conditions here, so it's almost miraculous that we're able to pull this sort of live stream <laughs> off. Uh, we're, we're deploying quite a few of our tools for this, so here we go. <laughs> so yeah, um, the co-op system uh, was formed in the 1980s. Uh, it's not owned by the Escapees RV Club, but they facilitated the communities to create these and helped the logistics of getting them all started. And each co-op park is individually owned by the members, mm -hmm. by the co-op, by the co-op members, not the members of the escapees, right, exactly. but by the leaseholders in that each co-op. And there are 11 parks that were formed. Most of them were uh, built in the eighties. This one officially opened, I think in 1990. Uh, so it's one of yeah. the later ones in mm -hmm. the system. It's also one of the larger ones, apparently. We have not been to any of the others, but we hear there are some spectacular ones around there. And I did put a link in the description um, to, number one, our story of how we became loose holders, a link to uh, the escapee site, which has the listing of all the 11 of them. And you have a uh, link to the tour also yes, the park. And yes, and there's also a video tour that another leaseholder in here has done of the park itself. So we're focusing on our casita. <laughs> we'll let <laughs> yeah. them focus on the yeah. park itself. Because they, yeah, they show you things like the wood shop and the welding shop that members that residents can use and all the other little facilities and the parks and everything. It's, there's so much here and so much beautiful landscaping and neat stuff. Yes. So um, the way the co-op works <laughs> is... Uh, Every one of the original leaseholders all kind of, you know, they figured out what the cost was going to be to build the park and they all kind of split up that cost. And then they all pay a annual maintenance fee for the upkeep, you know, the things like the water and the Wi-Fi and the maintenance and things like that. Um, this one, um, the starting uh, rate is about $12,000 to get a lifetime lease here. And basically it's no profit. You don't make money when you sell your lease. You just okay. put it back in the pool right. and, and the next person on the hot list can get it. Buy, they, they buy it and then you basically get what you spent. So it's kind of a safe way to store money. It's not an investment. You're not going to be able to have your lot triple in value. Um, but it is really nice that way. And then this whole concept of casita. So these were all originally bare lots, but they all were designed and had space and utilities and stuff so that People could build a casita on their lot within certain constraints. And we got a cat playing here. The, the casita is, I think it's what, 280 square feet max? 288 and, square feet. Yeah. And uh, certain height limitations and certain other things. They cannot have any 230 volt appliances. And importantly, because it's, the way it's zoned as an RV park, they cannot be set up as houses. They're not places that you can live full time. So you can't have a bedroom. A bedroom. But you can have you know a kitchen and a bathroom and a laundry room and um, you can have a guest bed and stuff like that. So people do quite a bit. And some of them casitas are incredibly elaborate and some of them are basically just storage sheds. Um, we have a one that's kind of in between. It is pre-plumbed to do a bathroom and a small, we'll probably do like a bar or kitchenette sort of thing. Um, but we're mainly using it as an extended living room and office space. Yeah, yeah we just actually, you know, it's finally back to clean, but we spent the last... Uh, 
like well, basically since we got here, we turned this into a studio. We covered the walls with cardboard for sound absorption and um, did filmed our course for the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We filmed a 45 episode course, which will be debuting early next year. So this casino was very handy for all that chaos and we had gear everywhere for props and um, but now we've turned it back into a living room. Right. <laughs> so this uh, RV, this co-op park offers a lot of, it's all about community. So right. the park system was created to be an affordable way for RVers to have become, a base camp. To have a base camp. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily that you live here full time, but you can. Um, but it'd be a place that is more where you can immerse yourself in community. So this one has a huge clubhouse where they have constant nonstop <laughs> events going on. There's been live music. There's been karaoke, right. potlucks. There was a coral thing um, going on so there's constantly <laughs> games and crafting yoga yes. classes and tai chi mm -hmm. it's the the social schedule here is bigger <laughs> than we can keep up with <laughs> yes and, and it's also more targeting to the retiree set you know we're, we're still working full-time so we, we still do cut out every day except sunday there's a community happy hour at four o'clock and we're, we're missing right now <laughs> we're missing this to do the broadcast to you guys um but we've been going to that a lot and it's kind of fun we are on the, the very younger edge of the current population here. Um, it is. Uh, this one is designated a 55 plus up park, which is an FHA designation for tax and zoning and things like that. And the rules under that is that a, something to be designated 55 plus up to can get those tax exemptions, um, they can have up to 20% of their residents be under 55 as long as they document it. And this park in their bylaws, they have decided to go through the effort to document and allow us youngsters in too. Yes. But so, there are very few of us under 55. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but there are actually, we do know quite a few escapers and uh, younger folks who are on the hot list and stuff because word has been spreading about this place. Um, so the, 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 the population might be shifting, but it is really nice that they do that. There are some other parks and some other, other escapee co parks that don't, that you do have to have at least one resident over 55 to be able to um, buy in. Um, this one, they deal with the paperwork and stuff. And there are some that are, don't have, that this, aren't. Yeah, yeah, they just don't that have that designation. Open. It's open to anyone over 18. Um, it is uh, done on one of the ways this, the costs are kept down. And one way to encourage community too is it is a lot of volunteer. There are, I think, five paid staff members yes. in the office staff room facilities and janitorial. But uh, most of the park is run by volunteers. So mm -hmm. it is an expectation if you are here, they say a substantial amount of time that you do uh, join a committee. And that could be landscaping, it can be long term facilities, marketing, technology is probably where we'll be involved. Mm -hmm. Um, but you do become part of making this whole community happen. So it's not just a come in, it's not like going to a commercial RV park where you just pay your money and you just show up and, yeah. you know, and, and just be there. And it does show a ton of pride of ownership, particularly the landscaping committee has made this place a little paradise in the desert. Everywhere you go, there's little gardens of cactus and desert plants and everything like that. And it's, it's just immaculate. And yeah, so it's just it's fun to walk around and explore and see what people right. have done. So it's been a great experience. We got here in early December. So we got our lease in. Um, yes. So we put our name on the list in April, no, March of 2016, mm -hmm. and we bought our lot in um, June of 2018. So just over two years it took us of being on the hot list, which is the waiting list, before we were high enough up the list to be able to effectively get in on a lot. And we thought we would wait longer or get a blank campus yeah. slot, one without a casita. Yeah. But when our friends, Jill and Tom, who we originally came here to see in 2015, when we saw their lot come up, we would said, well, what the heck? We'll give it a try and see if we happen to get right. lucky this weekend. And, and we got their lot. Yeah, it, I guess it just was because it was in the summer and not a lot of... They, every, it, they, they do kind of the lots that are available go out every Saturday. And whoever calls in with the lowest number on the hot list basically has the option to then buy that lot. And we... You know, the one, nice ones with casitas on them usually go fairly low down the list, but it was summer, and I guess a lot of people weren't paying attention to the hot list. We got the, the, we got this amazing casita lot um, a lot earlier than we should have, perhaps. But we were, I mean, we were we were thinking we were just about to the point of being able to get a bear lot, and we got a casita lot. Yeah, so. but once you're in the system, once you're a leaseholder, uh, as new lots become available, you get first dibs on them before they the, hot the hot list. list right? So we figured we would just upgrade later when we were ready to more make this a base camp. Right. Because the first couple of years we're here, we're really looking at this as storage for our bus, and we'll be back here maybe just a couple months at a time. Right. But once we get our boat further north along the Great Loop, our winters 
are going to become long. Our non-boating winters are going to become longer and longer, where we'll probably be roaming around by both the van and being out here in Benson probably more than half the year. So that's kind of our long-term intention with this location. Um, the ongoing costs, um, there are maintenance fees that the whole community splits and that last year was $1,300 yeah. and when you're not in the park if you can you, you can put your lot into the rental pool so that other escapees members can come in and rent your lot right so so then the the amount of money if you're setting 16 days a month so as long as your lot is open to the rentals for 16 days a month you get a share of that month's rental income and so in the win if you're not there in the winter or, or with the spring or fall and stuff where there's flies popular that can actually offset quite a bit of your annual maintenance fees um, and it's not like you're having to have your casita open too. It's just the right, the, just the, the, the RV side of it, the, the parking side of it is right. your casita is locked up and sealed. Right. And if we choose to, we can keep Zephyr here in our lot and yeah. not have it in the rental pool. Or we get a free storage space in the storage lot yeah. on the side of the yeah. park uh, where we can leave Zephyr. Zephyr can be very independent on yes. her own <laughs> with the solar and the lithium. Right. Um, so we haven't decided yet what we'll do this year, if we'll leave it in the rental pool or <laughs> not. We'll weigh the, the pros and cons of that. Um, but yeah, it's really affordable that way. And there's assessments. So there's, uh, you know, major projects, repaving the roads, putting a new roof on yeah. the clubhouse and things like that. It is a 30 year old park. The infrastructure will need mm -hmm. a lot of maintenance going forward. And the community here is committed to that. And so there is, um, assessment somewhere between 200 and $600 a year that you yeah. also put in. So all in all, if you're not in the rental pool, it's about $2,000 a year, which comes out to be about 166 bucks a month, <laughs> which was $100 cheaper than the storage fee we were paying to keep Zephyr in covered storage in Texas. So, yeah, cheaper to be stored <laughs> here. To be here. This is amazing. Right. Um, and then long term, if we're here, I mean, you just pay your electric when you're actually here. That's the only amenity that you pay when you're living on site. So that's kind of our plan going yeah. forward with the Casita. Um, someone had asked, can other people stay here? And yes, you can come in and rent. And in fact, if you're an escapees member and you're coming through the Benson area, this park does run an introductory rate. It's a half off for a weekly. So it comes out to $65 to stay here for a week. So if you're coming through, come through and check out the park. There's a boondocking dry area if they don't happen to have a lot available. Um, usually not until February, March does the park really get full. At least that's our experience yeah. in the past. So yeah, so it's a great place to, to come and take advantage of that, that first time or special. They also have, for people who don't buy in, they have... A one row that is for people who have a year lease, and that's a lot of people who are just still thinking about maybe getting a uh, buying in on a, a casita lot. And then there's another row that is either six month or year leases. So there's a couple like long term mm -hmm. um, lease spots here as well. Yeah, but you and, can come in and rent one of the leaseholders' lots when they're not in it for mm -hmm. daily, weekly, or monthly, depending yeah. upon availability. So definitely come check out the park, even if you're not ready to think about settling down. But you know, and if you like the park. You know, the get hot on. list, get on the hot list because it can take two or three years <laughs> yes. before you a lot becomes available that and, you're you're uh, yeah. eligible for. And it, there's just a lot here. Like there's hiking trails, to, miles and miles of hiking trails just right up the hill, right up the hillside behind here. Um, the clubhouse. There's a, a wood shop and welding shop. There's the storage area. There's the dog parks. There's, and then Benson's kind of a cool town. It's and then you're driving yep. just this other cool stuff. Yep. Benson itself has a grocery store, a Safeway, a Very Walmart, nice Safeway. several uh, a handful of good restaurants. The best Mexican restaurant we've been to, Macasa. Love it. <laughs> yes. Um, that's probably one reason we picked this spot. <laughs> Um, so there's a good hardware store, there's a trailer supply store, there's a post office, there's a small hospital. So you got all the basic amenities that you need for a town without needing to leave. And those are all within like two miles of the, uh, the park. And then Tucson's only 45 minutes away. And there's Sierra Vista, which is where Fort Huachuca's at, which is like 30 minutes away. Yeah, and then like, yeah, yeah so the, those are the two slightly big towns. Well, Tucson's big, but then Sierra Vista does have all the typical big box stores also, not too far to get to. Yeah. And then you got the cool places like Bisbee and Tombstone. So I, I don't know. I think we're going to really enjoy exploring out here. Uh, this is a definitely a great base camp to ex head out into the desert. Right. And yeah. So we anticipate in future winters that we'll come here, probably be part of the community for a bit. And then we'll go take the bus out boondocking some in the desert southwest. Or we'll just do shorter trips in the yeah. van. Just whatever calls us. Yeah. Uh, we will be leaving here pretty soon, doing taking both of them out and doing some of the escapers events and doing some... Uh, boondocking on our own for yeah. a while we haven't done that in a while <laughs> yeah, um, looking, so looking forward to some that. desert boondocking so do you want to switch yes let's go ahead and have a, a glass of wine you're, uh, you're at our virtual casita warming so we invite yes. you or cat casita warming the cat yeah we have named it the cat casita we get kiki <laughs> So you see Kat, Kiki's cat tree behind us that uh, we have promised her for years that she can have a uh, 
a cat tree of proper size. So she's got that, but she really loves it. And, uh, and she's also playing the chair and the Christmas tree. Half the stuff under the Christmas tree is for cats. And the whole thing is for cats. Um, so um, our uh, friend uh, Bob, he was seeing us post on Instagram and uh, Facebook about setting up the casita and especially the cat tree. And he suggested we should name it the cat cita. And that is stuck. So we are now in the cat cita. Um, future years, we're probably putting in new floors. We're going to put in a television. We'll uh, finish out the bathroom. We'll paint it uh, blue or gray. Get rid of the pink. Pink's not our color. So, so we have here, this is a Campus Oaks um, Old Vine Zinfandel. This was given to us by Mike and Kath, who are... Um, longtime followers that met up with us in Fredericksburg last month. So thank you guys. We're opening that bottle. We've saved it for a good six weeks. <laughs> yeah, so we've been waiting for a special occasion, and we figure our casita warming is worthwhile. And uh, as you guys know, we do these for fun. Um, our YouTube channel... Uh, I was really surprised uh, a couple weeks ago, driving and vibing, our friends Kyle and Olivia, they did a post uh, wrapping up a decade <laughs> of the RV community, and they named us the longest term um, RVing YouTube channel, because we were the, apparently the only one they found before 2009. We, we had to retract that. A, lo a long, long honeymoon has been around at least Just a year a or two more. longer than yeah. us. But, uh, but I was really surprised to really realize that we have been doing this YouTube thing longer than most <laughs> of the most popular RV yes. YouTube channels, but we do keep it for fun. Yeah, yeah we, we, we've never turned this into a um, crank out a video on a set schedule. And um, so, yeah, this is our fun thing. <laughs> so cheers. <laughs> cheers. Thank, welcome to our, our Katsita. Katsita. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Oh, someone wants to know why you're with me. You could easily get a supermodel. I could easily get a supermodel? Yeah. I have a supermodel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty, she's a pretty supermodel. High end, <laughs> fully upgraded. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we could probably take some questions here and then we'll also maybe show you some of the, the mountains are just yeah. starting to get more colorful as the sun is going down over this direction. Someone asked, why don't we take the next step and try and have children? Number one, <laughs> we're way too old. Uh, we are in our late 40s. Uh, we're past that prime of our lives. And I have, have always known I did not want children. And I actually physically removed those parts from my body when I had yeah. some other medical issues come up. Yeah, so not so, an option for us. And not a, not a desire either. Yeah. We prefer to spread memes instead of genes. That's <laughs> our philosophy. And, yeah, and, and our cat is a handful. All right, so if you guys have questions about nomadic life, RVing, boating, cats, casitas, co-op life, we're happy to take them. Um, yeah. Is there anything else? And somebody's got some weird things about an affair going on. There's been no affairs. I don't know what's... But strange things pop up in YouTube comments. Current baby, I think you're confusing us with somebody else. There yeah, are no fairs, no baby issues <laughs> yes. here. So, so yeah, I think you might have been watching some other channel. Oh, this is being an Eckerder here. Okay, Arby so crazy crowds. Cool. I guess you could say she is punching above her weight. He is a great guy. Uh, you, we're both above our weight, so <laughs> if you're going to be critical, Joe, please uh, get rid of this yeah. David person. We yes. don't need that sort of hate in our lives. Thanks you very much. It is the holiday season. Please. Fred, cheer, yes. not uh, uh, negativity, please. What is the weather like for the winter there? So it has, we had a cold snap. It was getting down in the 20s last week, but mostly it's been in the 30s and getting up into the 50s and 60s during yeah, the day. Yeah, so, so, so it, it goes, well, you see, we're in short sleeve shirts right now. The daytimes tend to be, unless um, it's windy, well, sleep. okay, but <laughs> the daytimes tend to be very pleasant, and then at night it gets chilly, and that actually makes for really nice sleeping. Um, we do need the furnace every night um, for the most part, but not too much because our bus is so well insulated. Um, but it, there's been a lot of beautiful days and not too many cold days since we got here. And I guess last year they had like four snow days, like a little bit of snow. That was kind of unusual here. Yeah, that, I do remember some people sending uh, yeah, a snow photos to us last year saying, yeah, yeah you sure you want to be here? <laughs> I actually like a little bit of snow. A little it's bit pretty. of snow is fun. And actually, we had it one of the first days that we got here. The snow on the mountains is just gorgeous. So when it comes down to a certain level, we'll just have beautiful weather here and just snow to look at, which is awesome. Okay, gee whiz needs to be... What? There's been no allusions to affairs before. There have been Goodness. no affairs. We've got some crazy people in our chat today. <laughs> wow. Um, 
We got a how long is your bus? And uh, I guess we could do that question. Here, yeah. I could put it up here. We got Santa. We got to bring Santa onto the screen because yes. this is the holiday season. So our bus is 35 feet long. We specifically went for vintage so that we could find a, a bus conversion that was 35 feet or, or smaller because that's when the highway lengths mm -hmm. change. But in this RV park, uh, you could easily get a 40 to 45 footer in here. It's not an issue. This mm -hmm. one's... We can do this one here. When will we be going back to our boat? Our boat, the current plans are, we'll be um, trying to make our village rally, which is in Florida mm -hmm. in mid-February. And then after that, returning <laughs> to the boat, which is on the East Coast, yes. of, obviously. Uh, is there a pool at the co-op? This is a question we actually have gotten several times. Some of the co-ops do have pools and hot tubs and all that good stuff. This one has none of that, which is mm -hmm. a bit of a downside. We don't really care for the pool, but a hot tub would be nice. Would be nice. But that, those are costs that would have to go on. Right. Um, watch the cat. She's... We might be getting cat barf live on camera here. Did we give her dinner right before this? Sorry, yeah. So yeah. So our our cat is a uh, uh, choking on her dinner. I can't get that. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll take a few questions while she tends the cat, I guess. Uh, John is wondering, did we resolve our lithium battery issues? And um, our, the batteries in our bus had died from a kind of a being left unplugged in storage. We're going to do a more a longer explanation. We've covered some of the past videos we've done. But yeah, we've got uh, new uh, batteries that we're going to be installing this week. That's our Christmas project for the bus is uh, new batteries. We did other bus projects today. Of uh, um, Today was the day we put in a new water pump because our pump had died and a new toilet. So those are all things that kind of suffered from over being in storage. And so now today was installing a toilet day and now video day. Um, I think she's okay. Yeah, I think she's fine. She just okay. sometimes has a little bit of a hard time right after she eats. Uh, I've got to get this David Monday guy out of here. <laughs> okay. I wonder if we're still seeing him because he's he's now complaining why he's oh okay maybe yeah why we're he's seeing paying, why he's uh, okay. been banned but I think we're still seeing it oh um, we got a super chat from uh, Bob and Dennis here well, thank you guys it says happy holidays let's bring these guys up here Ding. thank you the super chats are yeah they are. we do this for fun but we do love that it's going to go to our wine fund so thank you here's thank to you Bob, Bob and Dennis. Dennis thank you very much and <laughs> congratulations on achieving your goals of hitting I the know. road you guys awesome. And yeah, and a super chat is a one way to make sure that we should hopefully see a chat pop up because mm -hmm. this chat room is actually getting really busy today. Um, <laughs> we helped the cat. Don't worry, Sheree jumped. I jumped on the cat, cat. Oh my gosh. and she's fine. And she, yeah, she didn't even even throw up. It's just cat things. Um, I, I uh, some people I think are crossing us with some other our new yeah. There's. We're not the channel you think we are, some of you people. Um, eyes and glass on the 4788. We're not really talking about that today, here. So, um, yeah, we'll skip that. But our bus, yeah, our boat is, we've, I just checked on it via our security cameras earlier today. It is doing just fine out in where we left it stored. Mm -hmm. So Someone said, did you ever have to replace your eyes and glass? So we can talk about that. Okay. That's a boat question. Yeah. Uh, that's right. That's what. Oh, okay. That, yeah, yeah, so. Did you ever have to replace your eyes and glass on the 4078? And we did that this time last year while we yep. were in Sanford, Florida. We found an organization to do it there. Um, one of my windows blew out during the storm and I'm racing to find out how much a replacement cost will be. Um, yeah, so we did. I don't remember the cost like off the top 5, of my head. 5000 6000 No, it wasn't that much. Really? No, it's um, even with the zip down, because we did the zip down eyes okay. and glass. It, it wasn't officially eyes and glass. It was a vinyl, a clear yeah. vinyl. Yeah, okay. It, it, we, did, it was, we did the canvas. It was a whole project mm -hmm. together. I want to say it was around two grand just for the eyes and glass okay. around the flybridge. And uh, Jeff wants to know, we, we, yes, we are going to be going to the Escapers events coming up, the New Year's Eve and the annual bash mm -hmm. is our plan right now. Yep. We're excited to return back to the Escapers events. Um it's been many, many years since we helped found the escapers and um, going to the <laughs> convergences. I, apparently, they've grown a little bit yeah, since oh since back it's, then. They're huge now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Merry Christmas, Sunny, to you as well. 
This is Sonia asks, how big is the co-op? And this has got 350 sites? Yes, yeah, so there are 297 leaseholder, leaseholder lots, and then the rest are those um, short-term lease ones that you can come in as a non-leaseholder and rent longer term. And I believe there's even a waiting <laughs> list on those, we heard. Yeah, yeah, there's a waiting list for the, the long-term rental spots as well. So this place is popular. I, some, of the, some of the co-ops don't have waiting lists or short waiting lists, but this one has definitely got a long one. Um, how is the wine? The wine is very this good. This is really good. So yeah, they, they told us a story that this is one of their favorite wineries in California, and they've been carrying around the bottle for um, a special reason for a long time and decided to give it to us. And it is delicious. It's very so, delicious. Thank you, and, guys. Uh, it's an old vine zen, which is one of our favorite grapes. And... Oh. Um, they got it at a Harvest Host. And that's we've been enjoying doing Harvest Host on this trip across the country. Um, very good. By the way, the cat is fine. Yes. Everything Kiki, is fine. Ready for a cameo. People want to see how you're doing. Oh. Come on. Over here. <laughs> okay, go over here. Check, capture. She's actually playful and will probably pop up over here any moment now. Or she's scratching down underneath. And... What the? What are all these people having all these... Things about cats and I think there's some people who are just kind of being uh, some sort of provocateurs in this chat here, and they definitely need to go. Um, I'm I'm hoping that Joe is able to block them, and maybe just this view is not showing them all, so showing everything to us. But okay. So Cindy says they've been seeing the episodes of the RVers on Discovery Channel. And yeah, I guess the final episode aired this morning. Actually, we haven't yes, watched it yet. Yes, so final we, one of season one. Yeah, we've been watching one. the iTunes version. so Which we'll is see. so much better. If you don't like all the commercials in the Discovery version, <laughs> yes. the uh, streaming versions, which are on iTunes or Apple TV now, I guess they call it. Um, and uh, and Google so, Play and Microsoft. And for some reason, I don't know when they're going to figure out what happened with Amazon. It's supposed to be on Amazon too. And then that's the version that will be on PBS starting in January. Um, doesn't have all the commercials and has extra segments, which are, are kind of nice. Um, so yeah, so you know, it's been six episodes for the first season. Now we're seeing them all for the first time, just like anyone else. And um, it's, yeah, that, that's the show. Yeah. Um, are the grounds gravel or paved? Here at the co-op, so yes. they're a mix. It really, they all come with gravel that was provided in the original construction. Yeah, oh, the lot, the roads are all paved. The, the roads, roads are, are all paved. paved. The the lots are either gravel or whatever you do with them. Right. So some people have upgraded to concrete pads, which ours has, and some are still gravel. So it really just depends upon the individual lot. Okay. So I asked, do we ever plan to sell the bus and travel in the van only? And um, no, that is not in the plans. We yeah. honestly, when we were coming to get the boat, sorry, the bus, the bus out of storage, um, we did have thoughts about, is it really right to have three vehicles? Is that going to be worth it? Maintenance? I think it took us all of two weeks to decide. Yeah, well, almost like the first day back in the bus, just getting it back into the bus felt like getting back into a comfortable glove or something. I don't know. It just felt like home to be back in the bus. And we're like, do we really ever even want to dream of selling this? And then getting out here in the Southwest and having it just be so comfortable, and now the Casita being so comfortable, and we love our boat. So we're kind of embracing the power of van and want to have everything. And I think they'll all complement each other. They'll all have I think, different I, purposes. I think it'll be a really good fit traveling for a few months in the boat, especially as we get up north and winters apparently are longer than we're used to. Um, and then having this as a base camp in the West. And use the van to get between, go down and see family, do camping trips off of the boat, and even off of uh, from this as a base camp. So I think all three are going to work out really well for us. Uh, somebody asked, are you using Wi-Fi or your MiFi? So I guess they're asking how we're broadcasting. And what I ended up coming up with was we're using the Max Transit um, Duo that we have set up in the van, which is parked right on the other side of this wall, to broadcast over Verizon. And Verizon was giving the most steady uploads, and I'm actually impressed that it's doing it. Because we're doing wireless from the camera to the router, back to the laptop, back to the router, and out to um, everything else. And yeah, we're really kind of doing a lot of networking stuff, and it's holding up great. So fingers crossed. The networking here gets kind of marginal sometimes. Yes, yeah, so there's a large part. They did bring in a Wi-Fi system they installed a couple of years ago. Um, it does pretty well. Most people can get between 6 and 8 megabit per second down at their casitas, but they yeah. do have to aim a uh, nano station or some sort of Wi-Fi extending equipment to the main hub to get it because the park is pretty big and they didn't put out a lot of access points around the park. 
And Joe is pointing out anyone doing anything appropriate, inappropriate will be banned. And yes, we, we keep a completely positive space. We don't argue and debate with people and we don't have negative comments on our channel, period. So trolls, you, you, we're, we're not going to engage you. You can leave, please. <laughs> Thank you. And, and if you've been miscategorized as a troll well that's just kind of you know joe doing his job as a moderator and thank joe, you joe joe is a friend and a volunteer yes. and we so appreciate jo and, you and joe thank you if he you so misinterpreted much. a joke or something like that well it happens it's unfortunate but probably most likely you're a troll and you deserved it yep if you <laughs> really think we should um unblock you uh please do write us afterwards and t explain what was up yeah um and okay what else we got here yeah, Joe is doing a great job. A um, lot of people. Uh, Joe, Joe is earning his keep today. Um, and you know, let's, let's hear from the boss. And you guys are amazing and so strong together. And we are. We're very yes. happy. There are. There's, I have no clue what this Reddit thread is that people are talking about. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there was another Wi-Fi question. I think we just answered that. Um, uh, Rebecca said, how many RVers dropped out of the show? I think I know of one, but so originally there was, it was us, the RV geeks, uh, nomadic fanatic and the big guy, truck, JD. Big RV. JD's big truck, big RV. So uh, nomadic fanatic did drop out pretty early on and decided to focus on his own channel. He has a video about his reasons for that. And JD, as far as I am aware, just never got around to submitting content. I don't know that he dropped out. I don't think it's official. Well, yeah, but he, he, yeah, yeah, well, I guess it was official that he ended up not being a part of season one. But he's still a, fa a yeah, friend I, of the show. So, yeah, well, And I yeah, have no idea. We have no idea what's going to happen with the future seasons. We just did a, a few little segments, and it was fun. So uh, Louise has a – we have another super chat. Thank oh, you. Ooh. Oh, wow. Awesome. Okay. Um, is there one of these co-ops in Florida? And yes, there is one in Florida. Um, it was not on our radar because having one in Florida would have been awesome because that's where our family is. But it is designated 55 plus up. And my understanding is you have to be 55 up to buy into it. Um, at least one half of a couple. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're not qualified for that for a few more years. <laughs> uh, but that might be an option for us in the future to yeah. switch over to that. I, I, I do like having the kind of the coasts covered. But yeah, we'll always keep Florida as a central place in our hearts. And... Um, and there are other co-op type parks other than the escapees. We just don't know much about them. We're, we're kind of very escapee centric. Uh, so there might be others what out the there as well. Hell? What you guys did was terrible, but it was an accident. People need to get over it. Love you guys and great content. Best of luck with the IVF. I, you, okay, someone is seriously confusing us. We are <laughs> not trying for children. The, not never have, possible. never was. I decided to be child-free by choice when I was 19. I, well, I had I, my I, tubes cut when I was 29, and I had a hysterectomy at age 35. So, so children is not no even on the IVF table. Here. There is no trying. You have got us confused with somebody else. Um, I, I think maybe somebody is just trying to press buttons here. And thank you, Joe, for whatever you're doing here. Right? It's was we don't know what the official chat's looking like. We're just seeing the stream here and this thing. Um, <laughs> Curtis always likes to point out band names, and he is pointing out uh, from our village the unfortunate trolls. And these are all these people who are getting banned and seemingly creating backup accounts and jumping right back in the chat. So Joe is playing whack a troll or whack a mole today. Um, now, there's a question here. This has actually been interesting. Have you thought of putting a plug-and-play hot tub in your casita? Um, and so theoretically, the rules are uh, that you can't have any 230-volt appliances. So bigger built-in hot tubs aren't. But last time I checked the architectural rules... Um, you can have a propane or oh, natural gas. And inflatable one. ones are also specifically banned, but a propane powered hot tub is theoretically possible. Permanent right. I haven't and, looked into it and I would not do anything unless we spoke explicitly with <laughs> yes. the architectural committee. But that would be awesome if we're here long term. But mm -hmm. if not, there are some hot springs within an hour or two of here that'll be great overnight trips for us. Yeah, so we're looking forward to some doing hot spring explorations here. Mm hmm. Um, do you think we will rotate between the bus and boat more regularly? And indeed, that is the plan. That, you know, we missed all of last season. We were basically on the boat all last year. That's why we spent so long away from the bus. But the idea from the beginning was that we'd divide our year between the both and rotate back and forth. And we're looking forward to that. Um, share our thoughts on driving a large boat versus an RV. Driving a large boat 
is peaceful, awesome, amazing. You're moving at six to seven miles per hour, basically. So it's very comfortable. You don't have a lot of traffic in a lot of places. Um, docking a large boat docking is a whole other story. That's a yes. different thing. Wasn't the question. <laughs> yes. um, driving any vehicle, I mean, you're moving at 60, 70 miles per hour. You got to make quick decisions. It's, it's a different type of stressor. Um, Dri driving our bus... Um, on out east where the roads are tight and narrow and there's lots of traffic and stuff can be a little stressy I, I do enjoy driving the bus the drive i was actually so surprised at how nice it was to drive from texas out here to um arizona should we convoyed so i had the bus to myself and and sheree was in the van and so we convoyed and the bus drove mm -hmm. great on i-10 it loved i-10 i-10 is normally considered boring but i thought it was actually just beautiful to cruise down it uh, yeah, Joe points out it is wack -a troll Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much, Joe. And you, you, Joe has gotten sent many <laughs> bottles of wine in person and and um, in gifts. Uh, so we definitely value love Joe. He is a dear friend of ours. Yes. And... <laughs> so Pamela asks, how do we maintain Kiki's vet's visits on the road? And she's got universal national health care thanks to Banfield. Yes. Yeah, so Banfields are a vet organization across the country. A lot of them are in pet smarts across the country. And they share records and you can have basically mm -hmm. a health care plan. And they, they actually be texting me this week saying, Kiki's due for her annual comprehensive. Come we in. actually we actually did. A, we caught up in St. Louis just yes. two months ago. I think their records are a little off. Yes. But it includes their blood work annually, their vaccinations, and then you get like free visits. So if we're coming to a new area and we're not sure of like what is the flea and tick situation in the area or what is the best thing to <laughs> compact them in that area we'll take her in and get the recommendation from the local vet yes on that. and yeah we keep trying to sign up as monkeys for the banfield yeah. plan and they will not accept us they apparently don't do humans um did we get claustrophobic going back to driving on land versus boat the, the we thought the van might be a little claustrophobic because the van is our small living space but it was actually it was, surprisingly Yeah, we did three amazing months um, coming across from, some, from the time we hauled out uh, for Hurricane Dorian to the time we got to Texas and getting the bus out of storage. It was about three months that we were in the van full time. And it was amazing. It was surprisingly amazing how comfortable it was. And, you know, that just comes from years and years of us living in mm -hmm. lots of tight quarters. Now, is it, is it big like a boat? No. Was it nice to get back into the bus? Yes. <laughs> yes. But we were. it was still amazing. We did not think we'd be able to do months in the van and thought like a week would feel long. And it was It was very comfortable. Um, our boat is, Johnny asks, is our boat a trawler? Our boat is not a trawler, but we drive it like one. So it's... Yes, it's, uh, it's got two engines. It's got a turbo. It is a planing hull. So it is more considered a motor yes. yacht. It, it, it can go 19 knots, but we prefer to go seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw Tom ask this twice. He asked what capture rate we're using for the time lapse videos for those who didn't see the intro, the kind of the It'll time be lapse on the of us assembling well. the casita. <laughs> we'll play that again at the very end. But the time lapse, that was just actually the iPhone's built in time lapse feature, which uh, auto adjusts the capture rate based on the time that you record. So I don't even know what the end, what rate it ended up at. Um, anything here? JW says, can we recommend a company that restores or converts buses into RVs? And we bought ours already converted and kind of redid everything. So we have not personally worked with any companies that do it. Our friends, uh, Ben and Karen of the Creative Cruiser, and we did a video tour of their amazing bus conversion about two years ago. You can find it yeah. on YouTube channels. I think it's our top video right now. Uh, yeah. They use Paradise Coach out in Oregon. Yes, and oh my God, that bus is amazing. But so, have a big, big, <laughs> yes. big budget. That, they, they had kind of a, a, just let's make this amazing budget. Um, Chip asks, have we ever had a winter base in Texas? We actually just stored our, bu our bus in Texas, but it was in a storage, uh, enclosed storage. Yeah, well, so Chip is the amazing guy who made us gluten-free uh, stuff at the RVE oh, thing. Nice. Yeah, he lives in Austin. Okay, so he knows the um, deal. If we had a base, because we have so much <laughs> friends and family in all the Austin area, we'd probably be on the outskirts of Austin. Fredericksburg was a great location for us mm -hmm. to base camp out of. Uh, there is a Skip Co-op Park in Hondo, Texas, not to be confused with Hondos in Fredericksburg. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about it. I did check just before this, and it's not available to those of us under 55, so it wasn't an option for us. Um, but, yeah, we haven't really explored much of Texas outside of Austin. That's usually been our central point just because of family. Well, we've done several Texas state parks in various yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. but as far as base camp, right. if we're going there for several months right. at a time, mm -hmm. I, I'm not quite sure I know where I would 
where I would choose. Because yeah, te- Texas. You know, I, if if we're gonna be in, in Texas, I'd rather be further out west in New Mexico, Arizona, where the terrain is more my style. It's more three dimensional. Uh, Jenny asked, "Did you have trouble following the bus?" No, the van was incredibly easy to drive. Um, as people know, I don't like driving vehicles. Um, <laughs> Except boat. By the boat is yeah. not... Well, yes, I it's love the boat. Yes. But uh, <laughs> highway driving with traffic and things like that, it's just overwhelming to me sometimes. But the van, we upgraded the shocks. We put the Sumo Springs on it as recommended by the Travado community. Uh, we had put brand new tires on it because they had just reached about 35,000 miles and we just didn't want the stress about it. So it drove so much better than it did coming up to Texas. Yes, yeah. The, the Sumo and, Springs made a big difference. Yeah, the new tires made a big difference. You were able to maintain the bus at about 67 to 70 miles per hour. I, the new tires on the bus, I think, actually helped the bus uh, maintain highway speed because the bus in the past, I would have considered 65 fast. And this trip, I was able to do 70. You know, that was basically, I it took a long straightaway to get up to that, but I was able to maintain 70 for quite a while, and then 65 to 70, whereas normally I'd be doing 55 to 60 in the past. So the bus cruised beautifully across country as well. Yes, and the van cruised as well. It was incredibly comfortable to drive, <laughs> and it's nice, big, open roads doing West Texas. Um, biggest hurdle is El Paso, and we just timed that for yeah. non-rush hour traffic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gritted El- my teeth and <laughs> El Paso the traffic in El Paso and the lanes keep changing and the construction is a little tricky and then the final bit of um, New Mexico before Arizona I-10 is a disaster and it actually shook things off the walls and I mean that was that was a little bit violent uh, they really need yes. to repaint that uh, Jess wants to know are you still a network engineer neither of us has ever been a network engineer well, no actually I was that, was that was my title for a while Okay. Yeah, back, long but that was yeah, a long time ago. College. <laughs> yes, no. actually, my college job was I was no. an ATM networking engineer. No, so I was a software developer when we hit the road. <laughs> um, but now our primary income source is running the Mobile Internet Resource Center, which we have done. We launched that in 2014. Yeah. It's uh, We've tracked mobile internet options for our viewers oh, and wow. cruisers. We have a whole separate channel on that. And that is our full-time job. And we have a staff of fellow RVers and cruisers who help us out with that. And uh, we have a, in 2020, we have a brand new course coming out to go along with all of that. And it's all member supported. Uh, we love what we do with that. But we try to keep this channel focused on... On our fun stuff. And that's yeah. why this actually kind of goes to, to Sarah saying our apps are awesome and we should plug them more. And yeah, we've written several apps, coverage, state lines, and U.S. public lands. And, but we don't consider this channel our place to promote. We'll talk about them occasionally when they come up, but we don't come to this channel. I don't to like to them. promote and plug here. I mean, yes, we have apps. We have the mobile internet stuff. And if you're following along, yeah. maybe you'll pick up on that and find those other resources. But, but we don't want to use this as a promotional channel. This is about fun. This is about meeting you up on the road and yeah, sharing and a glass of wine, perhaps. Ding. Yeah. So, so yeah. So thank, so thank you for noticing that we don't over promote. Yes. <laughs> and oh, there was a Kiki photo bomb. Yes. Good. Yes. Um, let's see. I can't catch up. There's a, there's a lot of questions I'm going to have to skip over just because I think, um, we want I to think switch we're... you to the sunset in a second here. And um, did you hit any armadillos or roadrunners? I um, don't think so. No, we did not. But there's some roadrunners in the park here that have been really fun to watch run past Arcasita. That's why I picked that one out. Um, uh, Sharon says, I think you have a Carver boat. No, we have a Bayliner 4788. Yep. And you we get a, absolutely love it. Uh, and you can find our tour of that at uh, technomadia.com slash why not with yeah. a hyphen in there. That is our... Yeah. And we also have a YouTube, one of our other most popular videos is why we picked a Bayliner 4788 as our great loop boat. There are but a lot we, of boats out there, but that's why... Yep. But we did look at Carvers. They did uh, a couple models of the Carver did meet our top list before mm. we... It came down to which specific <laughs> boat was in the area, and we were able to put a contract on. So, but yeah, there were some carvers. I think the four hundred five was the one that the, most uh, there, there appealed to us. There were a couple carvers that yeah. actually where it made it to our our like mm-hmm. these were boats that were contenders list. There were mm-hmm. some interesting ones. And but, Joe, yeah. was, Joe was pointing out our work website. So thank you, Joe. MobileInternetInfo.com. And there you is can... a whole YouTube channel too. So if your yes. mobile internet's important to you, uh, go find the Mobile Internet Resource Center channel, and that's where we do news stories, free tips, and videos, and things like that. And so. actually, you might even see Joe I'll pop up on a channel on a rare occasion. Yes, He's been there. Yes, yes. <laughs> Joe was, Joe was uh, oh. actually up until last month was yeah. uh, part of our our team. He still is team on volunteer basis, but yeah, he was he, paid team. He was to one get of our staff members for a while. Um, oh, I think we're caught up. And somebody says, "Have we tried Bourbon Barrel wine?" And I don't think so. Is that a particular brand or? But 
I, I think I've had wines that have been been aged in bourbon barrels, but I'm not sure of anything particular mm-hmm. brandish. So, but if you've got a recommendation, feel free to send it our way. Yes, <laughs> I think uh, we're probably reaching the hour mark. Okay, Wait, I have no talk. It is four fifty one. Yes. And the, the mountains, I guess because the way the haze is, they're not turning as pink tonight, but we I can take that, the camera back outside and give you a, or do you want to do a little run through the Casita video one more time? Before oh, we show, show the show the, okay. the, the mountains lighting okay. up and then we'll do the ending Casita video. Okay. Thank you guys for joining in, wishing you and your families the warmest of the holidays. Um, we'll pro- we might do one more video before the end of the year. We have not had a lot of time lately <laughs> for doing video production. Like the, this channel is for fun. Um, but we might do a wrap up of the year. We are so behind. Our last travelog was in July. A lot's happened since then, and we might just do a year wrap up video, to just catch, catch up everything from... up because I don't think I'll ever catch up. Yeah, and and also the the the, the van trips and the the bus trip and all that. There was so much little things, but not kind of like the big. We're in Charleston for a month, like the last boat video we did. So, and, and boating it lends itself to more in progress video because it's just so pretty to be cruising as opposed to driving down I ten. Which is gorgeous, but not in the same way as cruising through the coastal Georgia or something like that. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, anything else? Okay, let's go. I'll swing the yep, camera we'll outside. Give you, a, give you a view of our, our view. You can narrate. Step out on the patio. All right, so you starting to see. So the sun's, we're looking to the east here, and the cat's following you, Chris. Um, the sun sets behind us, but we get a lot of reflective light on those mountains. Those are the Dragoon Mountains by, uh, in front of us, our gorgeous view. And there's a toilet there, by the way. If anyone wants a Dometic toilet, we just replaced our, it just needs some work with the springs. It is up for grabs for free. going around the side of the casita so you can see that we do have there are sidewalks going up the terracing so that makes it really easy to get to the clubhouse and we've been really surprised with how private feeling our casita feels so we've been really really happy here and i'm gonna go catch a cat We've got a little video and time lapse of the casita coming together, and we will start that as our outro. But again, Merry Christmas, Christmas. Happy Holidays, Happy and... Hanukkah, <laughs> Kwanzaa, whatever you're celebrating, wishing or, you the warmth of the and, season. Yes, we'll see you in next and, decade. And thank you all for joining us here. Ciao.